Aha, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that the reason you clicked on this video is to see my new glasses, eh? Eh? They look pretty similar to my old ones, so I understand if, what's that? You just came to see tech news. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do that then. Oh, and a PSA first, we've got a few more PAX videos coming out soon, so keep your eye out for those, and we'll also be announcing the winners of the giveaways that we held as part of each of those videos on an episode of NetLinked next week. Yes. To the news! Apple! Apple, 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 you actually did it. You took away the headphone jack. That's right, Apple unveiled the iPhone 7 during this morning's event featuring a rounded aluminum body. The rumored dual cameras are there, which will allow you to have two times optical zoom, much like the LG G5. It's also got stereo speakers now, one on top and one on bottom. Not too shabby. Oh, and the iPhone 7 is water resistant. Well, come on now. Am I gonna end up actually liking this iPhone? Of course, the other rumors were true. Apple ditched the headphone jack, but they're including a lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapter in the box, so you can actually still use your old headphones. They're also including the new EarPods with the lightning connector and announcing new wireless versions called AirPods that actually look pretty sick. <sighs> The home button is no longer clicky, but instead uses the same force touch tech used in recent MacBooks. Inside is the new A10 Fusion processor, apparently 40% faster than the A9. The phone comes in the usual colors, as well as two new varieties of black, cause two blacks are the new black. The iPhone 7 will launch September 16th at 649 US for a 32 gig version, and again, they finally upped the base storage, dang it! I usually make fun of Apple relentlessly during these segments, but this thing actually... It actually looks cool. I'm sorry. F. Also, iOS is getting an exclusive Mario game of all things. It's an endless runner that actually will eventually come to Android, so... Uh, so ha. There you go. One for Android. Now, Apple also unveiled the new Apple Watch, which they're calling Apple Watch Series 2. Ooh, that series just elevates the elegance extravagantly. There we go, this is where I can make fun, great. It's got a 50% faster CPU, a two times faster GPU, and a two times brighter display, but most importantly, it's water resistant up to 50 meters, so you can straight up swim with it. <sighs> okay, that's cool. And as usual, they have 50 different types, and there's a special Nike version because marketing. Apple announced some more minor things at the event as well, so make sure you check out our news sources to get up to speed. The iPhone 7 wasn't the only giant thing announced today. Sony took the wraps off two new versions of the PlayStation 4. The PS4 Slim is the console we've all seen in leaks the past couple weeks. It is essentially identical to the original PS4 in terms of internals, but it's a little smaller. What we've been calling the PS4 Neo, however, is now officially the PS4 Pro. It's got upgraded internals that will allow for playing games in 4K as well as 4K streaming via services that support that. What it won't support is UHD Blu-rays. Heh. So it's 4K for everything else but Blu-ray. So kind of a missed opportunity there. Sony is being clear, however, that the PS4 Pro is not meant to split this console generation. Every game for PlayStation 4 will be playable on both consoles, but things will just look prettier on the Pro. The PS4 Pro will launch November 10th for $399, and the Slim will arrive September 15th for $299. It's time for... It's time for Big Things! Hoo-hoo, <laughs> yeah! Nice! Thanks for your submission. Send us a clip of yourself doing that to get featured. It doesn't have to have pizza. Unless you wanted to. LG launched the sequel to their V10 smartphone today, the V20. It's a 5.7 inch device with a secondary ticker screen at the top. Inside is a Snapdragon 820, 4 gigs of RAM, 3200 milliamp hour battery, and a 1440p IPS LCD display. Halo 5 Forge mode for PC is supposed to release tomorrow, but it actually went live early today, seemingly by mistake as it's now been pulled down again. To run it though, it looks like you'll need both a DirectX 12 capable graphics card and the Windows 10 anniversary update if you haven't gotten that already. NVIDIA has released GeForce Experience 3.0, which brings a significant design overhaul, three times faster speed, and 50% less memory consumption. Plus, they're apparently giving away gaming notebooks and HTC Vives for using it, but I don't, 
I don't know how that works yet. And Nintendo will be giving away a Nintendo NX as the prize for a six month long Splatoon tournament that ends in March. So presumably the NX will launch before then. So that's great news. News sources for all of today's stories can be found in the forum post linked in the description. I hope this isn't uh, inappropriate. Einer in der Tat ist in der Tat einer Tat, die in der Tat ein in der Tat. Uh, yeah, totally, dude. Yo, dude, you play Hearthstone, or...? Because if you do, all your training thus far could be put to good use. The MSI Canada Dragon Cup is back. It's an online tournament taking place September 10th and 11th and sponsored by NVIDIA and ourselves, NCIX. Prizes for players include a Nightblade gaming desktop, a GL72 gaming laptop, and a QB compact desktop, as well as $500, $300, and $200 NCIX gift cards. But you don't even have to play to enter to win prizes as game codes and swag bags will be given out to viewers of the tournament. Plus, even more, select MSI laptops and desktops are being sold at special tournament prices at NCX.com if you'd rather just skip the whole tournament thing and just get your own. Go on and click the little eye thing in the corner there for all the details. All right, that's it for Netlink Daily, guys. Thanks for watching. Click here to watch more videos. Follow us on Twitter over here. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go and work on uh, pushing out some more hair for my beard. Like... Maybe it'll come if I try really hard. I think Jack's going to come back this week. I don't, uh, tomorrow? I don't know when he's going to host. But he's apparently going to have no beard. I think, I think that's what's happening. So if he comes back and has no beard, I have to have a big beard too. There has to be a beard on the channel. Somebody has to have a beard. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you later. On the next one.